Yep. So um, I have two guys now um, that are working with me, and we're on maintenance. I'm trying to, like, stir away of me getting out of the field on maintenance and dig more into the landscaping. Why? Um, why? It just seems more profitable. The maintenance is, like, pretty low margin, what evi- um, what evidence more you, drive time. What evidence do you have that it is more profitable? So, for instance, we can do a, you know, 2000 two thousand dollar job in a day instead of say we're at forty bucks a cut on maintenance and we can do about twenty properties which is eight hundred bucks paying them for instance. Okay. Um how many mowing customers do you currently have? We're at about a hundred. And so some you, commercial, some residential. If you if you raised all their average price by five dollars per cut, do you do you think you'd probably lose what, ten, fifteen maybe? Yeah. So in, if your average cut price is 40 bucks and you said just right now that you could raise them all by $5 per cut and probably lose 10 or 15 of them, but probably the next spring rush fill all of their spots within a matter of a few weeks of the spring rush. So we literally are going to increase our mar- our prices by 15%. That 15% is straight profit. So if you're doing 10% now, you're now doing 25% profit margin. And so what I would challenge you, instead of going adding more services, especially hardscaping where you need more experienced employees, bigger trucks, bigger equipment. Instead of doing that, focus on what you're currently doing. Raise the prices to the point where you now the profit margins are actually just as high, if not higher. And you're not going to have to go get more equipment, trucks, and the experience level of your, your onboarding team is not going to have to be any more. I'm not saying you shouldn't do landscaping, but don't go into landscaping because there's more margins. Because like everyone goes into because the higher price, per day, like you just mentioned, but what they don't realize is that there's no recurrent recurrence to it. So you can't sell the same job mowing 50 times in a year. You can't sell it a thousand times over the course of someone's lifetime. And secondarily, you need bigger trucks, bigger equipment. You have to have a sale for every single job now. It's harder to get out of the business. Now you have to focus on design, build, like how deep you go into it is, is, is irregardless. Even a, a property cleanup though is a one-time job. It's something you are going to have to be involved in, especially as the business grows far more so than you getting a route of, of, of jobs. If you have 100 right now, you raise the price by $5. If there's four cuts in a month, that is 100 times five. That's $500 per week times four. That's $2,000 in straight profit at the end of the year just by you raising your price. And so I would challenge you to do that first and then ask yourself if getting into landscaping is more profitable because I everyone goes, like the mentality that you have is exactly what I had seven, eight years ago starting Augusta Lawn Care and it costed me hundreds of thousands of dollars and three to five years that I could have circumnavigated just by figuring this one thing out and that is that no service is more profitable than the other. It's how well you execute against it because the market will ultimately drive profit margins to about the same amount in any service industry. And so what you have to figure out is how do you create a brand and a service around any one of those services to be able to create a higher margin than any other company. That is a business worth that worth making. Go ahead. Yeah, and that's what I'm trying to do. So like I have those guys focused on maintenance and I want to keep them on maintenance and keep growing maintenance, but I, I'm at the point now where I can trust them to kind of go out and keep on with the small details and stuff like that while I'm doing, and it's not like hardscaping, it's more like uh, sod, mulch, plants and stuff like that. But the question with that is like, so on the quotes, I'm sending them detailed quotes and I'm I'm learning on a lot of the jobs. I feel like the customers are seeing the numbers with the details and it's kind of throwing them off. Like, for how would you, do you guys just send, like, if, if it's a $2,000 job, do you detail each um, objective or you just detail in one job, $2,000, and then have the details in the quote, but just the one price instead of detailing each price? Okay, this is 200 this is 300 Yeah, so when it comes to project-based work, we really try to focus on breaking down the job notes as much as detail as possible. And our job notes become our, est- like our estimate notes become our job notes. So exactly what the customer sees is what the crew sees. And furthermore, when it comes to blocking down a big project, the only reason we're going to do that is there's very easy blocks on a job. For example, if you're doing an entire backyard, I'm not going to just do backyard landscape and list off 100 things. I'm going to do patio, mulch, planting as separate line items, but it needs to be delineated things that could be done separately. Don't do like, you know, I'm going to do $200 for picking up the plants and $300 for putting the soil around the plants. And then like, don't break it down that much when it comes to price, have that in the notes, but then the actual parts that we break out for price differences are going to be only things that could be done by themselves.